Okay, welcome back in to our final installation of transition uh, for the court sessions film room. Mike and I are going to shift our focus to the college game. We have a men and a women's clip um, to wrap up our month of transition. Here we go, Mike. I love here, there's a four on two. Right? Really, red doesn't have that much of an advantage. I mean, they're pretty much all even. You got four Houston players in a line, just starting, getting out. To trigger, they both, in this bottom lane, decide to run the same lane, which is okay. They can organize late and just get out and go to get the ball into the decision zone as quickly as possible. Yeah, and look at the point guard, Mike, as he gets through that dead zone, just kind of scanning to see where his options are going to be once he gets to the decision zone. And look, he's got teammates open, but again, so important, make someone stop you. No one stops the ball. And and, and with that decision, Mike, look, here we go, right? As we approach the uh, decision zone, look at all the attention, right? This is the first guy back. He comes off and makes him take him. That's also fine. But now we have one here. Five is really the only person physically guarding the ball. But look at the attention it's getting. And now as we get triggered here, we get through the dead zone. We're going to get to the decision zone, which is where we get organized. And here it is, Mike. Um. And so these guys, I mean, they, they do that, right? The decision really is, am I going to finish my cut all the way to the rim or am I going to hold space? This first guy decides to cut rim and the other two guys, the top wing and the bottom, decide to hold space. And then what's really important is that the point guard didn't have an option right away, so he continues to just probe. He decides to see what's available because he's really not getting guarded that well. I mean, there's a guy there, but not really pressuring him. So he gets to probe and see what's going to happen and winds up finding a great opportunity. Two things I want to illustrate there. One, the ball broke the arc in five seconds. That's what kept the defensive attention, right? And then secondly, Mike, coaches, I really hope you took that word. Players, I hope you really heard that word from Mike and start to make it a part of your game. Probe. Um, that's another thing that's kind of like basketball evolved, right? There's a big difference between over dribbling and probing. Over dribbling is dribbling without purpose. Probing, the purpose is I have the ball where the defense doesn't want it, and I'm just going to keep it alive to occupy the defense's attention and keep all my threats. Because if this exact ball handler were to pick up his dribble and be dead, the defense would disperse to all the offensive teammates, and there would be no passing lanes or options. The threat of the attack with the ball on the floor allows these passes to happen. So there's a big difference between over dribbling and probing. Such a good clip and such, a, such an easy layup by just running to the rim. Doesn't even look like he's got an advantage. He's pretty much guarded, but the defender momentarily thinks it might come to the wing, loses focus and gives up a layup. Yeah. So defenders in transition, commit to somebody. Your commitment will, it, whether it even be right or wrong, your commitment will then trigger your teammates to commit to something else because they know something else is at least taken. But if we're playing half and half of everything, every other teammate will play half and half, which will then give the offense something. All right, here we are, Mike, in the women's game, Oklahoma State, TCU. textbook break on the trigger these front three just get out to their lanes running we're two wings running wide and then we got a big running running to the rim and we have one hunter trailing before we even let this run look where our stretchers start mike like she's basically at the lane line she's at the arc Look how wide they wind up getting. They wind up getting to the outside of the defenders as they get through that dead zone. They get out, and as soon as they get out, they get vision. And that's a little thing, Mike, but it's a big difference. Like, they're not even looking for the ball until they're out where they want the ball. 
So they're not even looking for it as they're running kind of a middle lane to where if they get it, they're just in no man's land. They don't even look for the ball until they get wide enough, which and is a looking, huge little step. It is. And, and it's, again, they're trying to get through the dead zone as quickly as possible. And now they're turning to see the ball. And what I love about this, this hunter running rim is she's running the lane line opposite where the ball is, not running straight down the center of the court. What that does, it gives her a better angle to get her head around to see the ball. And it also allows the point guard to have a better angle to make that pass if she's open. To the eye here, I want everybody to watch the timing of this because the girl Mike's talking about kind of creates an advantage ball um, by her cut, not by having the ball. So. Watch the timing of this. As soon as she gets through the decision, uh, sorry, the trigger, the dead zone, and makes her decision to get to the block, watch this guard kind of pull with her. And then the big here kind of starts to step that way as well. And then watch that, Mike. The second that happens, she almost creates the advantage ball by, with her body. And then this point guard recognizes it and just moves it. See that? The second it happens, then it went. Yep, love it. Easy, open catch. Again, sometimes it's just making making an easy completed pass. And then that pass, because of this, like Mike said, she ran the nail, created the advantage ball out, causes the closeout long, which then allows the catch decision to be a little bit easier on the drive. Now we have a shoulder read coming downhill inside the elbow. Mike, look at your secondary punter acknowledging what's happening and just kind of staying out of the way. Yep. And the first hunter is now deciding, I mean, she gets to the block and decides, is she going to stay there or is she going to slip? And she could either slip strong side short corner. Or she decides to slip the weak side block just to create space in a great, in a great spot. And then this bottom stretcher, just decides to stay stretched and create space on the court and keep her gravity pulling her defender out of the lane. The action is obviously generated by, right, by the ball handler here. And then, like you said, that original hunter making room and space. But players and coaches do not undervalue this, like Mike said, the near side stretcher just standing here. I see oftentimes players want to contribute, so they think they have to move or cut, and they wind up doing it at the wrong time. This player here, by staying wide and ready to shoot, is holding this defender here hostage. And Mike, like you said, this is the defender, right, that should be bumping down when she sees that the original hunter comes weak side away from ball. She should bump down, but she doesn't. So if you look at 15 here defensively, she's not taking away the pass that winds up getting the, the bucket, nor is she taking away this kick out to the three if they wanted to have that as well. Back to what I said earlier, make a decision. Mm -hmm. 